Hello, my name is Tanner Litchfield. I am an investor and a realtor based here in Utah. Today, I'm going to be talking about how I negotiate seller finance deals. I've been able to get some killer deals here in Utah, including 3% interest rates, 3.25, 4.125, and these deals all cash flow here in the appreciation market of Utah. So I'm going to dig into how I negotiate these deals. Now, step one, when we are negotiating these deals in sales 101 is I am going to ask a ton of questions and I'm going to be very curious and I am going to listen a lot more than I talk. Now, the reason I do this is because I want to understand their situation. And then when I understand their situation better, then I can formulate a win-win scenario based on the tools in my tool belt. And number two, once you've uncovered their situation and what their need and what they're after, then you can work backwards based on terms. And so I'm going to dive a little bit more into number one, and then I'll get into number two. So number one, what are we trying to figure out about the seller? I want to know what's most important to them. A lot of times people think that they need all the cash out of their deal. And if they truly do need all the cash out of their deal, seller finance won't work for them. If they have an underlying mortgage, that's more sub two. In this video, I'm specifically talking about true seller finance where there is no bank involved. And so if they don't have a bank involved, then that's really good news for me because I understand it can be a seller finance deal. So now uncovering more details, how much are they trying to get for their house? That's a big one. If they're asking an astronomical number, it's gonna be really hard for me to buy that deal because they're asking for too much. Number two, if they're open to terms, then how much money do they need up front? A lot of times they'll need money to pay off debts or to make them feel comfortable with the deal. Because if you don't have enough skin in the game, if you put 5% down and the market at just 7%, you have no incentive to keep paying that note. So the seller thinks about these things. Another thing to look out for in a seller finance deal, if it's their primary residence versus if it's a rental property, if it's a primary residence, they will get up to $500,000 in tax free profits. So, and you'll see why that matters here in a little bit. Now, if it's a rental property, they are gonna have a capital gains hit. And so where seller financing really makes sense is if these sellers can defer their capital gains hit. And so if it's a rental property for them, the conversation goes like this. Hey, Mr. Seller, I understand that you bought this property for two packs of cigarettes in 1972. If you were to sell this today, how big would your capital gains hit be? It'd probably be in the six figures. No one wants to pay that much to Uncle Sam, not anytime soon at least. So with seller financing, you can present an offer to where they can defer that capital gains hit based on how long the balloon is. If it's five years, if it's 10 years, et cetera. That's a huge win for the seller. See, as we're uncovering all this data, we can understand if one, it, the deal makes sense, and two, what we can offer to make it make sense on both sides. So keep in mind, we're uncovering all this data here. Some other things to think about. Sometimes the seller wants a specific return on their equity. This is a lot different than a desired monthly payment. So let me dive into that a little bit more. If the seller wants a specific monthly payment, so let's say their expenses are $2,000 a month, and that includes their laundry, their property tax, et cetera. All their expenses are $2,000 a month. So to them, they're like, I want $2,000 a month. And there's another side of that coin where a seller will say, hey, my bank accounts on a high yield savings account right now are getting about 5%. I don't want my rate to be less than 5%. And so that's a complete different solution in my end. If it's, they want $2,000 a month, I can get creative on my amortization schedule and interest only payments, which I'll dive into later. Now, if it is a strictly a return basis, then I can give them 5%, let's say, to match their high yield savings account, but to make it cash flow, I am going to make that return interest only payments. So if it's interest only payments, they're gonna get a lot less than let's say for that example, 2000 a month. They're gonna get like, 
1100 a month, let's say for a random example. And it's going to be less on the monthly, but their return on their equity is going to be greater. And then in 10 years, whenever the balloon is due, they're going to get the entire note because we're only paying interest, right? Another piece of information that we really want to dig into is when they need the lump sum due. And this is in terms of the balloon payment. If they need money in five years because they plan on moving out of Utah, then your balloon payment might be stuck at five years. If they need that to be even sooner, like two years, I don't really like the deal. My minimum balloon is five years. I prefer seven plus years because here's the risk. If it's a shorter balloon in two years, now you need to refinance or sell or pay off the loan. And in two years, a lot can happen. But if you give yourself more time in the market, chances are there's gonna be appreciation, rents are gonna go up, and it's gonna be a lot easier to sell and to refinance, either or, right? So that's another piece is the balloon payment. And then going back to number two, we need to figure out how to work backwards on this equation to curate a win-win scenario. I don't do deals unless it's win-win, right? A lot of people think you're stealing property from a grandma. That is not the case at all. Most of the people I'm working with are highly sophisticated because they're, they own their property outright. And so I'll dig into that. Is I've accumulated all this information from the seller and I have a good understanding of where they're at. Now I can try and add what I'm after to make a win-win scenario. If this seller, they need $500,000 because that's the number in their head and that's about market value, I can give them the $500,000. If they need $100,000 down because they wanna buy their dream car and have a little bit in their savings, okay, maybe I can make that happen because it's 20% down and it's somewhat reasonable. Now, if I can get them those two terms, which are most important to them, that's where I can get creative on the other terms. So these the other terms are interest rate, amortization schedule, and balloon payment. So here's how I negotiate these deals. Hey, Mr. Seller, I, I have run my numbers and here's what I've come back with. I want to give you your purchase price and I want to give you your down payment so that you can get your dream car and have some savings. Here's what I would like in return. I would like a three and a half percent interest rate and I would like a balloon of 10 years so that I can make sure this business relationship is lasting so that I can make sure we are getting into a business relationship that is not set up to fail. And then I want to do a 20 year amortization. So here's where I'll talk a little bit more about the amortization. This is where you can get really creative. And in a bank situation, in a residential, in most residential deals, they base your mortgage payment on a 30 year amortization schedule. That means you're paying a lot more interest up front, and then there's an equation that's super intricate where you're paying more interest towards the bottom of the 30 years. And so when you can play and get creative with the amortization schedule, it can make a lot of sense in these deals. So at the complete opposite of the amortization schedule is you can pay zero principal, which is an interest only. If you do interest only, your cash flow is gonna be much higher, but the caveat is that you're not paying any principal down. Now, in this circumstance, I went with a 20 year amortization. The reason I went with that is because there is plenty of cash flow. I can pay off that property in 20 years. And so maybe my balloon is due in, in 10 years, but I've paid a lot of principal off in that 10 years. So when it comes to refinance, or sell, I have a lot more equity. And this can get even more intricate than those simple amortization schedules. You can go up to a 40, 50 year amortization. You can go low like I did 20 years. And then you can even get more flexible. What I did on a fourplex in Salt Lake City, I ignored the amortization schedule and I said, hey, listen, in the first three years, I'm gonna, half of my payment is gonna go towards principal. And then in the remaining three years, 75% of my monthly payment is gonna go towards principal. So I'm paying off a ton of equity here. So I'm paying off a lot of the loan, and when it comes time to refinancing, I'm gonna have a lot of equity. With seller finance, it opens up so much that you can get creative on. That's why I prefer this over traditional, and then even sub two, right? Sub two, you can't get as flexible because there's a bank involved. If the bank's offering someone a 5% interest rate, it's gonna be rare that you get a 3%. So sub two is not as enticing to me. And plus, it, there's some gray area in there. 
I love to be completely above board, ignore the risk of due on sale, and you can scale when it comes to true seller financing. If you're trying to learn more about seller financing, make sure you subscribe. I do a lot of these deals and I'm trying to make a lot more YouTube content, so I'd love to see you on the journey.